Welcome to Combat COVID-19 Community Support. Thank you for joining us for our very first live event. My name is Dawn Creech and I'm leading up the Combat COVID-19 campaign in Central Oregon. Next slide, please. We are producing a series of live stream events designed to bring trusted health information and stories of resilience directly to people in their homes during the pandemic. Next slide, please. We have some fantastic speakers this week focused on a range of topics, including uh, tomorrow at noon, how to manage chaos and create resilient children during uncertain times. On Thursday, how to manage sleep difficulties and anxiety during the pandemic. And we actually have two events on Friday, one for older adults and one for people with diabetes. So we hope you can tune in for those as well. Okay, so before we get started with tonight's awesome speakers, my lawyer says I need to go over some really boring disclaimer information. So bear with me, I'll get through it really quickly. This event is provided only for informational and educational purposes. It is not offered as medical advice or medical uh, care. If you require assistance with any mental health or medical issue, please contact your healthcare provider. We make no guarantees or warranties of any kind, express or implied. Okay, let's get this started. We have a fantastic program tonight with uh, this Topical Life podcaster, Tiffany Murphy, and she'll be talking about quarantine life with motivational speaker, Kevin Brooks. It's gonna be a real treat. So um, tonight's event will run about 45 to 60 minutes. Kevin and Tiffany will answer some of your questions at the end of the interview. So if you wanna type your questions into the chat box, we'll be monitoring them and we'll uh, go over them at the end of the interview tonight. So with that, I'll hand it over to Tiffany. Hey everyone, I am just so glad to be here. Thank you, Dawn, for inviting this topical life to um, bring these amazing guests that have been through some amazing things that have come through the other side. And anyone who's listening right now, I just want you to feel encouraged because we're all here right now because we want to help you. And so we just, um, we're here for you. This is a really, really hard time. And um, there's a lot of things to say, but I feel like with this topical life, it's more about people's stories and how they got through something and where they are today and how they get through just life itself. And so it matches very well with combat COVID-19 and where um, the challenging times and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, my guest, Kevin Brooks, Kevin is amazing because, okay, so let me just give you a little backdrop here. We met, um, probably, I don't know, Kevin, like six months ago. I don't know. Yeah. So this is the thing, this is important for me to tell you because we were at an event in Oregon city, Oregon, and he was, <laughs> Kevin was speaking and I took my son, he's almost 15. And like, we were listening to him and we were so moved by what he was saying. And I was just like, golly, in my head, I was like, he knows the hardships. He gets it. He is like, holy moly. I just needed to know more from him. And so I looked at Joey and I said, Hey, do you dare me to ask him if he'd ever be on my podcast? <laughs> and honestly, it was like, it was like, okay, I'm just going to go all out. I'm just going to like show my son that I can ask things. You know what I mean? Um, so I went to Kevin and I said, Hey, I was like, I really like your story. And this is before obviously COVID this was like six months ago. And, um, he was, he was just such a sweet, <laughs> kind, open person and was like, yeah, I'll be on, you know, I asked him if he'd be my podcast. He's like, yeah, he's like in person. I was like, <laughs> yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, <laughs> cause he had, we had, you know, he's actually from Canada. So, um, which is another point about Kevin is that he's from Canada and, um, he's helping me homeschool my kids because he mentioned that apparently we realized that time zones are different in Canada <laughs> or the same or the same. So we're taking it to the next level. Anyway, enough about all that, Kevin, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Okay. So let's the beginning, this. which the beginning? beginning? The beginning would be where the reason why you do what you do, which is travel around and speak to schools, conventions, lots okay. and lots of people about what you do. I got you. So, yeah. oh, it's a tragic beginning to the story. I will put that disclaimer out there. It's, it's tough. And I haven't talked about it in a while being at home. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I mean, 
I grew up skateboarding, hockey playing, hard partying, rowdy kid. That was my crew of buddies. And uh, it sadly caught up to us one night. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of poor decisions, a lot of risk-taking behavior. And um, some my, my buddies and I were out partying and I sadly left to party in my vehicle driving at the end of the night, uh, intoxicated and driving down. And sadly, uh, even more sad, um, sadder, my buddy had grown up playing hockey, Brendan, like we basically got out of a taxi and hopped in with me in the last minute. And we we're gonna go to another party and we, we went off the road. I don't remember any of it. Um, and Brendan died and I am paralyzed from pretty much the armpits down ever since. Um, so- And you were was, how old? I was 21 at the time. Brendan was 20 and it was, it was, I mean, without a doubt, it was the worst event of my life. And it was quite a journey. I mean, I. I, I barely survived, um, was comatose, more or less drug induced, didn't know I was paralyzed, didn't know my friend had died, didn't know I was in a hospital, was on all these medications, all these tubes, machines, in and out of reality because of all the meds they were giving me. Sure. And eventually, you know, after, I guess, stabilizing, because they didn't know if I was gonna live, they uh, started weaning me off the medications. And I learned that at first I'd been paralyzed, which I'm just the most active guy. and that invincibility complex that a lot of young people have, which is I'm sure why I was making those dumb choices that night because nothing in battle ever go ha ever happen. Uh, but then, yeah, learning about my friend, it was just, it was horrible. And it was like, it's kind of like you're trapped too because I couldn't even, couldn't get out of the bed. I couldn't even speak at a tube in my throat. You're just like, you just have to take it. And what do you do with it? And yeah, in the early days, it was really just survival and learning like I, had my arms and my hands and my head and my neck and my shoulders, you know, so how to learn to manage a, a six foot tall, 200 pound body with just that. And it was just like baby steps, really like getting off a breather and then eating, like eating was a thing, you know, like to try to eat solid foods again, cause I've been fed through a tube for so long and um, getting past that really basic stuff, getting out of intensive care, moving on into a rehabilitation center, which was like, how to learn to use a wheelchair and, and then everything else, and dressing and all that stuff. So all the like, sort of mundane things you take for granted in life became these huge challenges. And I mean, through a really good support network of family and friends and, and I can't get enough thanks and like just appreciation and love to Brendan's family, my friend who passed away because his parents from day one were like just super supportive and on my side, I mean, I, I ended up having charges against me. They went to bat for me and kept me to jail. And I, I said one day I would go around and, and share the story. And it was it was really just an idea. I didn't know how to do that. Um, and it, you know, I was that badass kid in high school too. So for me, to, just the thought of me going into a school, like like I've ran into my teachers from years past who were like, you're the speaker? Like, oh, like. I never knew. I'm like, well, yeah, I have the life experience, you know, like, so maybe it's good yeah. to come from that, that side because right. I can see both sides. So fortunately, um, I don't know, everything just seemed to be leading in that direction. I met a man named Rick Hansen, who's a paraplegic from Vancouver, and he's like a motivational speaker. He rolled around the world, like the circumference of the world years ago in a chair, and he invited me to do an event for his organization, and I did the swim with family and friends who swam across the lake and that got a little media attention and got me into my first school and terrified of public speaking, but definitely had a story and a will yeah. desire to share it. And just after that first one, the kids dug it. They were, I just got a good rapport with young people. I have still luckily this day, but they, they got it. They're crying. They're hugging me, thanking me. And now it's like probably 18 years later and I'm, I'm doing, I don't even know. I probably did 120 schools last year all over North America. So it's grown much over the years. And I, I still, I love it. Like it's my, it's my favorite thing to be doing. It's, it's tough to share the story, but it's been a learning experience that by sharing the story, it's, it's bringing something positive for something very negative. And it really has helped countless people, like just in so many ways. And it's been a real healer for me too. Sure. I, I have a, like, I think all of us are probably, okay, so 
I think we're kind of like, okay, day that you woke up and realized you were paralyzed. That's yeah. where I'm kind of like, wow. Um, in the sense of, first of all, waking up and realizing that, and then his parents, like him being, I believe like one of your best friends and yeah. not knowing how it would go. And like, can we kind of unpack more how that journey was for you as far as like the moment you woke up to <clears throat> paralyzed to realizing you needed to talk to hit Brennan's parents and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, when I learned it, oh man, like, I don't even know, like there's stuff I just learned recently and I'm not trying to do a plug here or anything, but put out a book, which, you know, recently. And yeah. Um, in doing that, we, there was interviews with my mom and family and some of the stuff my mom said, cause I, I was so like, Sure. I hit my head in the crash and I've been on these meds, but just I remember reading my mom's chapter about like Brendan, just when she broke the news and just, just bawling our eyes out and just. Cause he was, so, he was more like a family friend. He was, yeah, were, like we, he was a year younger than me. So we grew up together playing hockey. Right. And that we all had that big bond, but he hung out with like my sister, Alice and I have two sisters. They dated our parents got along great. Like we were definitely close. Mm -hmm. Me and him didn't, necessarily always hang out like it was kind of random we were like it wasn't random I guess but he was I was the skateboarder snowboarder I kind of dropped out of hockey and the hockey guys were still doing the hockey thing and everybody kind of you know you got your groups right sure but definitely we're buddies and just sadly that night he ended up being in the car but you had to learn that and but I and I knew like because we'd grown up together like I know his parents I remember his little brothers and sisters running around the ice rink playing with my sister, you know, like I know that found, I know the grandparents cause they're at every game. And just to think of, you know, first it's like trying to process that your friend died and it's, you can't even, it's just doesn't, that's so much to just take in at once. Like it just yeah. doesn't real. Exactly. And then it was just like the app. Then after that, just like, it was another like sucker punch for lack of a better term, just to, to all to go with his parents, his family, like, Oh my, like I've ruined their lives, you know? And just, and just being trapped in that bed and in this broken body. And I, like I said, I had no voice. It was, I was tricked. So I couldn't even really communicate. My mom's trying to read my lips, which she had learned to do pretty good, you know, being a mom, because I hadn't been able to speak in however long, but it was, it was the worst thing. And I, I just don't, it's kind of weird, like in a situation that, cause I was in the hospital and I was still in some ways like I had infections that I picked like I picked up a staph infection right so I had these lung infection all this stuff so in some ways I was still I wasn't maybe necessarily fighting every day for my life but I was fighting for survival something, something, something. yeah so they just kept you so busy in the hospital and the rehab there wasn't a lot of time to really focus on that stuff and and then yeah I mean it really I obviously it was there and it came out in different times, like, you know, alone in my room at the end of the night kind of thing. Um, but my mom, one day, just once I was out of the two months in the hospital, I did the four months in the rehabilitation center. And while I was in there, my mom handed me a piece of paper one day. I was just like, you know, if you're ready to make the call, uh, Brendan's parents are ready to talk to you. Right. And how long heard, after was the accident that that happened? It's probably like maybe five, four, three or four months, probably four, yeah, four or five months even. It was, I was pretty far along, I'd say, into my rehab because that was just, like, you can't even get out of bed. I couldn't even roll over in bed. I couldn't sit up. Like, I couldn't do anything. So I had to learn everything. And I just remember I was a bit more mobile. So I think my mom was kind of maybe like, maybe he's in a good headspace now because he's mm -hmm. kind of getting outside and just doing stuff. Um and then his family invited me over. I talked, well, I talked, I called, it was his mom. And she, I just remember she answered the phone and I s asked her, was it said my name? And then just like, it was quiet and oh, a million God. things are going through my head. Right. Like, oh, like my mom just that's told probably me, the weirdest, <laughs> like oh, weirdest, hardest, like it was, it was so terrifying. Like I looked at that paper every day for weeks. I had no idea how to do it and I'd heard they were being supportive and I know this family and I just like I don't know what the hell do you say right and then right but I also knew I had to make that call and just one day I did and a lot of tears with his mom and then his dad I remember took the phone and he was like supporting me and just being so cool yeah. 
I don't even know. I choke up a lot of times. I'm talking about this stuff, but yeah, he, sure. he they invited me over. And as soon as that day basically came or I was in good enough condition that I could just slide into the passenger seat of my mom's car, which was took a board and multiple people to do that, you know, with the paralysis and chair, we, we went over to his family's house and they, they just, I don't know, the dad, we had a big heart to heart in the back patio. And they were just like, you know, Brendan made that choice at night, like it could have been reversed. And that was the, the attitude and the stats they took on it, which is unbelievable. Um, really, it's, it's, I don't think a lot of people do, right? But they just, I, I've asked them how they, you know, forgave me and supported me. And they just have always said that it's easier to forgive me than it is to like hate me or have that anger. Um, and I share that lesson and I share that story in, in depth. I mean, when I'm speaking, anywhere that's a huge part of the messaging is like that forgiveness and yeah just I mean they 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 gave me a second chance you know and um I like to think I've I've, I've honored them and their son and, and what I've done with with that time yeah um to be able to go out and bring something from you know from that terrible tragedy um, but yeah, I, I mean, it's, and it, I, I, this is like, I'm 41, this is 20 years ago, this crash happened and I'll tell it's still, it's still hard. It almost gets like harder, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, it definitely doesn't go away. And I mean, I think what Brendan and his family a lot and it's, it's still can be really, really tough to deal with. Um, like when does it kind of feel the hardest? It does. There's never, there's no. There's no rhyme or reason to it really, you know, it just comes in one day and there's something, something will remind me of him or I'll, I'll drive by the spot where it happened because it's like five minutes from where I live on a pretty major, major intersection. Um, just anything. I don't know. It's, it's never far from the front of mind, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's something I'd never wish on anyone. And that is again, what I'm, why I'm out delivering. <laughs> the story that I share um, just to be responsible for another person's death is, is horrible. You know, it's, it sucks. And it's, it's something you live with forever. And it's, and in this case, it was totally preventable and totally stupid. And there's no need for us to be out partying and driving that night. We had, we had other options. And yet it's, it's so common though. I mean, this is a story that you hear a lot. I mean, maybe they won't get in accidents and maybe they won't this and that, but anyone can know someone who's been driving drunk. Anyone can know someone that has done that. And so that's why it relates just, it hits home because it's, it could happen, you know, and it did. And, and it still does sadly. Yeah, for does. sure. Even have you noticed, I mean, this is just kind of a random question, but like with Uber and all that kind of stuff, does Canada, okay. This could Canada, be a stupid question. No. Does Canada, does Canada no, have Uber? We do, but you know what? Vancouver did not, they're one of the last, they're probably the last big city, um, I'm guessing kind of, because. but I've been a lot of places in yeah. North America to finally friggin' get it. They didn't have it. It was just a joke. I mean, people land in our airport. I don't think we got it until like the last couple of months. Maybe do January. you think that if you were a kid at 21, do you think you would have done it? You think you would have taken it well, over? The unfortunate thing about me back then is I was an idiot. And I'll just say that, like, because my parents were calling me that night going, we'll get you home. We know what you're doing. They knew I was oh, a party okay. animal. Yeah. Okay. And I still didn't listen. And that's like, sure. I have a hard time because I like, because I do these presentations and I'm telling kids, I'm like, I'm not encouraging you to party, but I do recognize it might happen. You might sure. just find yourself at a party. You might just yeah. find yourself in a vehicle with somebody who terrifies you, whatever, any sort of crappy situation you don't want to be in. If you have that phone call that you can make to somebody or they call you, like, take it. You know, I wish I had it. I wouldn't be in this wheelchair right now if I'd have taken that call. And looking back and being like, that was cool of my parents. You know, maybe not everybody thinks that's what parents should do, but, oh, well, I was 21, so I was legal at the time anyway. But they were always like that. They were like, they'd raised me. They knew I was a crazy kid who was, you know, getting up to no good a lot of the time. So they, they at least try to give me that option. And, and sad thing is Brendan's parents, the same thing, you know? So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I kind of, you wonder if, I, I don't know so how we, cause there's so many of us doing it. We just figured it was what you did. And yeah, I mean, I mean, I, honestly, I do the message that I'm like, sure. Oh, if you guys are doing this, like, don't, 
not worth it. And you have more options now, like, cause you do have Uber, you do have Lyft. You do, I mean, there's more transit, there's this, there's that. So it's just not worth the risk at all. And I mean, and there, there's a legal side to it. I mean, there's, there's so many sides to it. It's just, it's a selfish move um, completely and just, yeah, not worth it at all. So do you feel like, like with, you know, obviously there's a certain strength now that you have that a lot of people have never really experienced. That's something that like every day you wake up and you're making a decision. I'm getting through this day. Um, like I remember like when you spoke that, you know, you were joking around about being a little bit older, like maybe health was becoming a little bit more challenging because you're trying to, you know, things that you didn't expect to kind of come about, you know, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And you're just faced with it every single day. Not it only is. This, yeah. So like, just now that you've been through it for many years, really, and now you're facing new challenges, do you find that you lean on the strength that you've come to or? Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird in that it becomes kind of your new normal, right? Like, yeah, I, I could be, Honestly, it's been a while since I've woke up, lifted my butt into my wheelchair, did the shower thing and the dress thing and really been like, holy crap, this is a lot of work to do this. You know what I mean? Because it just becomes the routine. Yeah. But I definitely have those days as well where I'm like, okay, I got to get myself out of bed and then I got to get into the shower and then I got to get, I mean, everything's a workout. Um, and with this COVID thing, I think I've gotten a little bit kind of lazy where that's, I washed my hair today for you. Um, yeah. Well, that's a whole other, probably, that's probably a whole other months. thing we're going to talk about, but you yeah. Know what I mean? um, you where we are now. I am wearing pants. <laughs> and, you know, it gets, um, <laughs> I'm not wearing socks, but uh, it's whatever. Okay. Right? Like, it's um, <sighs> yeah, it's, I've, I've gotten to a pretty good routine, I guess, here right now in that I'm home. And, and this time of year, I'm not normally home. I'm in hotels pretty sure. much every night flying and traveling to, cause it's a really busy time for speaking. Um, but yeah, there's still days, I mean, and everything I learned, and I think part of sort of my strength and positive mental attitude is just appreciating little things. And like every, there's always been, there's always like steps or like, I had to learn, I had to get up the breather before I could eat, you know what I mean? And I had to get up the breather before I could leave intensive care. And then I had to do this before I could do that. And it was just, it was like always, seeing some form of progress, I guess, mm -hmm. and just appreciating those things and being appreciative for like what I have versus stressing about what I don't, because I mean, this is a long list. If I really want to go down what I don't have, what I'm not doing, what I used to do, um, it's just pointless to me, really. There's, it's, it's not going to get me more good. I mean, I have those moments, but I, I can usually get them out of my mind pretty good. I recognize I'm lucky to be alive and don't really feel it's fair even to get too down on myself. Like just knowing that, I mean, Brendan passed away, you know, so his family has a lot harder than I do. So I, there is a thing inside me that doesn't, I kind of go, come on, man. Like you can't, don't feel sorry for yourself. Um, never, never unpack that on a psychologist or anything, but I seem to be doing all right. Yeah. But you right. know, I do, there is, there is, I think there's a form of the guilt that doesn't let me get too down on myself. Cause I, and it's weird. I mean, it's some sort of balance with all this, this stuff. And, and again, going out and every time I go out and I even say to like the students, I'm going to say students, cause I mostly talk in school, yeah. um, but it's like, they've, they've kind of became my counselors in a sense. Cause every time I'm out mm -hmm. telling the story, I'm going through it, I'm working through it. I'm seeing sure. progress. I'm, I'm creating art in a sense. And that I'm doing this presentation that ebbs and flows and has humor and sad parts and pauses and stuff. Um, that I love that too. That's become a, such a passion of mine just to be like a performer in a sense, which sounds kind of weird. I, maybe it does, but, but it's, it's an hour on stage by yourself. Microphone. Oh, I hand. saw you, you do yeah. have to have like, yeah, it <laughs> you gotta do something like it's, there's something you gotta, yeah, there's, there's definitely, you gotta have something kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's all, it's all fit together and. I mean, overall, I, I live in, I'm living a great life, I'd say, you know, and, and I'm yeah. uh, doing my best to get through this stuff right now, like everybody else is. Yeah. 
it definitely poses some challenges being in the wheelchair that maybe people who are upright on their feet don't have. But again, yeah. work through those, you know. And I want to talk about more about the COVID and how that relates to what you're going through now. But one question I do have is that, like, I noticed that through our talking and stuff that a lot of teens and stuff, they do reach out to you and that you do have a voice for their life and they come to you for advice and you struggled with, um, deep depression, at least what you've said in public, yeah. just, yeah, yeah. uh, suicide, all those things. And I think as a parent, we want to know what the kids are saying, like, because they're obviously feel comfortable talking to you about it, um, with seeing what you've gone through and stuff. And I just think that's such a valuable place to stand because you're like at the front row, basically of them being like, being very vulnerable with you, you know? Yeah. And, um, I noticed are, that like, are. yeah. So what, what is the, what are the things like either now with COVID or yeah. like just what is the trending theme that you realize with kids? Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll say this first is that, I mean, I started doing the speaking um, and I pretty, pretty fought, like soon into doing it. Like it's like I did the school for after the fundraiser thing and another school, then another school. And I think I was about that time where I was approached by the insurance corporation of British Columbia, where I live who was like, we have this speaker program and we think you'd be a great fit and, and whatever. So I started doing, so I was being sponsored by like a traffic safety uh, or insurance oh, company, right? Sure. It was purely a traffic safety message. Um, but I didn't want to just be up there and be like this sad, depressing story. Cause I would not be able to maintain my sanity. I'm sure if I just was crying and sad every time I did it right so I guess there was this always this underlying positivity and message of never giving up and never losing hope and sad like and I've been doing this a long time as I was saying so I've seen things shift more um I've really seen a rise in self-harm mm -hmm. um uh, depression uh anxiety uh suicide in young people and sadly it was quite a few years ago now and I, but I was just kind of getting into the the, the, I don't know, a pattern, what am I, what's the word am I looking for? I was going to say like yeah. the, I just kind of getting my feel for my speaking, getting into a rhythm. Yeah. And um, I was out of school. I remember my dad was there for like the first time to watch it, which was going to be emotional. And it's like, don't look at your dad. Cause if I look at my dad, I'll cry. And then I'll, I'll be done. <laughs> right. I'm, of course. Find this whole friggin' presentation. And then my phone rings and it's like, I'm a, you know, and it's one of my buddies. And I'm like, ah, he'll make me laugh. And trying to loosen me up before this. And he tells me that our buddy has killed himself. And I got that friggin' phone call literally like minutes before being handed a mic to do an hour long emotional at the best of times presentation. And I cried my eyes out through the whole talk and talked about my buddy Jordan killed him. So I didn't know anything at that point. I was first suicide I'd ever dealt with. I don't know what dealt with. I would Definitely. Just, I just learned it. So I had not dealt with her even, Sure. but I found as soon as I brought that up or started talking about that, that man, it just opened the floodgates and a lot of students who messaged me are struggling with mental health issues, suicide. I, it's shocking how many students reach out and they're like, I've had six suicide attempts. I've been in and out of, um, you know, it depends on states where, but you know, in the hospital uh, or, or on like a lockdown kind of thing. Um, there, there's a major struggle right now. And I'm, when I'm in the thick of things, which is leading up to this whole COVID shutdown deal, I was in Florida basically doing two presentations every day. And I was going to be doing that until the middle of June. And in those, I would leave a school and sometimes on my like social media and stuff, Instagram at just wiggle your toes, um, uh, plug, but, um, I mean, you could you could go on there though and see shameless like, plug shameless plug yeah but you yeah. can go on there and see like even what the kids <laughs> write comments and stuff yeah they write me and I get a lot of messages so there's days where I mean I think just in the two weeks I was in Florida I counted that I responded to it was hundreds I think it was a couple hundred oh my gosh from students um and I and what I are they saying them, what are they I, I'm still stupid because I I'm not like, um, I, I open it. I tell them, I'm like, you guys can write me if you want to write me and I'll write you back. And I've always kept that promise. Um, that's amazing. Okay. Let's just take a pause and say, thank you for that. Because as a parent, we need that. Like, 
thank you for right. doing that. I'm happy to do it. Like I, and it's, it's like, I'm 41. Like I could be a teenager's dad, you know, in a sense in the age. Um, but they still kind of see me as a peer, not a parent, which is cool sure. too. And that, and they will tell me anything, you know, they do. And I mean, there's times, well, even in Florida where I contacted, like there was the sheriff's department was coming out every talk. And I contacted the sheriff and it's like, this kid's talking about self-harm and suicide. Um, and you know, the, they end up sending us a, a wellness check out to this kid's house and, and putting them into a hospital for, I'm not sure, I don't know how it ended, um, but for that night for sure. And to be watched over cause they were, she was showing signs that she might kill herself. And it's like, it's crazy. Like it's, yeah. But I'm just, ha I'm happy to be that guy that the kids trust enough to sure. relate enough to. Um, yeah, to, to reach out and if they, I mean, I'm unloading a lot of them, so it's fair for them to unload anything on me and just to at least write them back and say, hey, thanks, you know, or well, you are showing up on their turf in a sense. And oh, being yeah, they don't know what the hell they're walking into. Yeah. Most of the time, either they're like, whoa, we thought this would be a drinking driving presentation. You got into suicide and this and that. Um, oh, my son. I mean, he was there. He saw it and he was just like, wow, like, you know, he's 14, almost 15 and he's not driving yet, but. These are the kind of things that, I mean, I remember when I was in high school, I remember, um, you know, the difference between the nineties and now I would say is, is that I remember going to a high school and they had like a car that had been completely demolished by yeah. someone who'd been drinking and driving. And they're basically just showed up everyone at the stadium and was like, this is why I don't drink and drive. Boom. Yeah. Here's a car done. It's all that. But I think now I think the trend is, and then we're going to talk about this in a few weeks is more like prevention, like yeah. acknowledging, like not fear-based, but like actual prevention and stuff. Yeah. But back to like what you're saying with the kids and where they're at. I mean, because as a parent, it's like, I don't even picture, like, I think a lot of parents say, well, I didn't even know my kid was suicidal. I didn't even yeah. know. And these are very supportive, amazing parents that, you know, we're looking at ourselves like, well, we didn't even something like, what is the thing? Is it, they just don't people telling their parents or like, what is the, what is the thing that we need to do? Oh man. I mean, I wish I could tell this to every parent because I hear, and you have to take things kind of with a grain of salt because it's a teenager telling me and they might be German. It's anybody. They might be German. I don't, I don't care. Just say it how it is. Say it how it is. But you know, but, but they're messaging me. Right. And yeah. I, and I, I, I believe them for, but you know, I get so many, and I know there's gotta be truth too. There is. Yeah. Where it's, they go to their parent and their parents, like their dad's like, quit being a pussy or you know, their mom's like, yeah. suck it up. You're being dramatic. And like, no, I'm depressed. Like, mm -hmm. and then they don't feel they can talk to the parent or the parents like, you know, tells them to go, you know, whatever, go, go play hockey or go play football, be tough. You know, it's not a matter of, you can't just go play sports or, you know, there, it's, this is like an actual illness that people have. And I think that some of the older generation doesn't quite get it because it's only been in the last maybe 10 years. There's really been the awareness and just the honest speaking about it and attention it's getting in media and that. And, um, but it, it's, it's sad that that drives me nuts. And I'm like, I wish I could talk at every school and have those parents there to give that message. And if your kid comes up to you and mentions this stuff, um, it's like, serious. what is the kid like, give me an example, like literally, like, what does a kid say that they're like, Oh, I tried to tell my parents that I was depressed. Did I tell my parents that I was like, what is the thing, like an example of what they might say? Um, it's just, you know, I, they'll say depressed. Yeah. Or, or I've just been, I just can't get happy lately. I'm feeling really down because when you're depressed, you kind of become like a recluse. You don't do the things you want to do. Your mind starts really turning on you in a sense. That's, that's mm -hmm. how I kind of describe it, that it's a battle. And it's the, you know, the, your depression is like, it's, I say, it's kind of like it's own little entity that it's inside you and it's working against you to make you feel down, feel lousy, maybe be suicidal, not do the things you need to do, eat healthy, get outside, get fresh air. It's, it's basically you're fighting against it. And if you kind of, if that gets the upper hand, um, you know, you're, it's going to just sort of encourage you to do things that don't help your mental health, staying in bed all day, not sleeping well, not, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so it, it's sort of a pattern of those different, um, I guess, issues or activities or whatever, lack of activities just to change in sort of people's lifestyle that parents could definitely look out for, but also 
I mean, especially, and if a kid comes up to you and says, I'm not feeling good, I'm sad, I'm not really, and, and you, and there, and also you're kind of witnessing this change in behavior. I mean, you got to take it seriously and address it, you know, and, and I'm, I just hope every parent just sort of understands it better, reads about it. You know, I'm, I'm no specialist. I'm, I've done some, a little bit of schooling with the, like a, um, like a crisis hotline, basically like a suicide hotline. Cause I wanted to yeah. get actual stuff and just but most of it's life experience talking to these kids yeah. but um you know there's it, it's it's they say it's, it could be like one in five people yeah uh, have some form of mental illness so i mean it doesn't discriminate just like covid doesn't matter how wealthy you are what neighbor you're from where whatever if if you get it you get it and it, it is manageable but you need a team of people you definitely need i mean you're better off with family support and and especially in high school, you know, it's hard to kind of go to your friends. You maybe don't have that good group of friends. A lot of people who are depressed in high school are the poor kids who are bullied, who don't have like one good friend they can trust or they move around a lot. So they've never had been able to establish those uh, relationships to have a good friend. So, you know, they, they maybe don't want to go to their school counselor because they think the school counselor is going to report to their parents and their parents are going to find out and their parents are disappointed. Um, but it's a conversation I think every parent should be having with their kids sure just to sort of say like the doors open you know like i'm not saying you have it or you don't but if you ever are down you can come to me or you can come to whoever i uh, just know that you know we love you unconditionally we'll never judge you and we're here to help in any way we can um as simple as that right um yeah well i mean amen. that's the... lovely <laughs> yeah because <laughs> I, I just feel so terrible when this kid's writing me and i'm like and that's what i'm kind of i'm like wow your parent sounds like the worst person in the world some of the stuff they share right but i mean again you're like maybe this is the half truth but even then i still feel bad for you because you just the fact that you don't have that ability to go to your parent and get that support and if you can't get it at home i don't know where else do you get it right well i mean good for them for reaching out to you i mean that's what I think is why you say like how you respond to those kids. I mean, that is truly li like life saving. I mean, I know that you go, do you travel around and talk to people about prevention of um, driving while intoxicated, but or under the influence. I just think that that is a direct way, especially in the technology world that we live in. I mean, for kids to be able to reach out to you like that and you do that. I mean, that's huge. I mean, one of the things I say to my son is just like, okay, if you can't tell me or your dad, is there someone in your life you could tell? Like yeah. those people that stand up and really enter the, the kids' lives and um, just be that person to go to, like that's where I tell my kid to go to. Cool. Um, just because I know, I mean, like even, well, I mean, I'm not gonna say it on the whole world, but yeah. even today I was just talking to my son and I was just like, so, you know, like there's just some things you don't want to talk about. He's like, well, I don't, you know, at the lunch table, like goodness knows. I mean, this was like two weeks ago when there was a lunch table to go to We're in COVID yeah. now, but just like, he's like, yeah, I might've been a little inappropriate. And I'm like, well, describe inappropriate. He's like, <laughs> like he's, he's not gonna, gonna be really excited. You're sharing this story. <laughs> he might not come to you ever again. You might just want to stop it there. <laughs> I mean, he's going to write me tonight and be like, my mom, I can't believe it. I'm so mad at my mom. Oh, he knows me. Okay. Yeah. He knows that I'm in here right now talking to you about yeah. God knows what, but he's, you know, it's just, if there's someone that you can't talk to, that's not me or your dad, please, who is that person and name them, please. So and I won't ask them. So I think that's really cool. You know, and I, I like, yeah, I think that's great advice too put out there oh to any parent to say pat that. on my back okay <laughs> pat on my back um so now um that you're saving kids lives and you're doing your thing and it's awesome and now we're in covid and yeah. talking on this topical life and covid night or uh, combat covid 19 is not necessarily what was in your plans oh. here you are and um what's it been like i mean surely just your life experience has kind of catapulted you in a normal rhythm of change and all that kind of stuff but how are you feeling now i'm doing all right like i'm really glad we're doing this because i i basically came home like you know tours abruptly cut to an end mm -hmm. and in a matter of like six days three months of bookings are dissolved there's nothing 
And it's kind of like, all right, there's a bit of panic. I mean, that's what I do sure. for a living as a speaker too. Like I'm like, kid, I have no source of income for at least six months now. Um, I, this is my favorite time of year. Like I love being out traveling and speaking. So my mental health, mm -hmm. how am I going to cope with this? This is going to be really friggin' challenging. Um, and it's about, well, it's three weeks now that I've been home three weeks yesterday. I got home from Florida and I've barely been out of the house. I have barely had any visitors. I started to do these zoom things and stuff like that. I found that I haven't been a lot, like I basically have like kind of my two worlds in a sense too, where I, well, of course, whatever. Um, I have like my Facebook uh, for students. I have my Instagram, the at just with your toes, plug again. Um, but I, I do comedy, like I do comedy as well. So I'm like a, I'm in a wheelchair, so I'm not really a stand up comic, but I do <laughs> go on stage, tell comedy. That's yeah. kind of where my humor lies. So that right, just yeah. right there is kind of tells you why I don't mix those two worlds all the time. So you're trying to be very serious about this story of being paralyzed, but my humor is very dark and it always Yeah, happens. I was going to say, I mean, it takes a dark sense of humor, which it's helped me get through this too. Yeah, so I was, was going to say last, it, the I'm last sure three does. weeks, my world, my brain has been in like sure. writing jokes mode, which has been good. So I've kind yeah, of been creativity. On, talking to those people in my, in that world, which is punk rockers from all over the world and like a punk rock club I'm in and comedians and telling dirty jokes and inappropriate jokes and just laughing amongst ourselves in this craziness because it's kind of like what else do you do right yeah. um but I'm glad we're doing this today because I feel I kind of shut that part of my brain off in a sense of like doing the speaking doing the but getting the positive messaging out there um and I'm hoping after today like this 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 vibe stays and I'm going to do some more posts and stuff like that just to welcome students to start reaching out because some have, uh, but just remind them that, you know, if they're struggling right now, I think it's at that point where it's two, three weeks for people. Like yeah. I'm starting to go it's, a little crazy, you know, yeah. like it's, how do you stay positive? What do you do to just whatever, whatever to get through the day and like, you know, and be ready for another one tomorrow. Um, I definitely find it's a day by day thing. And well, that's kind of how you live your life too. That's why I feel like yeah, it with definitely your is. routine, you know, you have a routine and you have a way of getting through your day and the, even the, every little step you do is, is a step, you know? And so for a kid, I mean, even for myself, I mean, I, you actually came across my mind, actually. I was just like, just in my day, just like, yeah, I mean, this is every moment counts. Every moment that you do counts and it's going towards a step. It's going towards a you know, that's why I find what you do is so motivating in a lot of ways. And probably for kids, you know, they just, they see through truth. They know truth and they see. Kids are, kids are not given enough credit, you know? Sure. And, Absolutely. And it, that's why I think they really respond to me because I actually listen to them and speak with Honest. them, not at them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And be genuine. Right. But I, I don't think people give enough credit. They've, they've been around, they've figured things out a bit. They've got more to learn. Right. But they, 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 I don't know, they, they blow my mind, some of the stuff they're doing too. They do some really positive, great things too, right? Changing the world. Yeah, they're changing the world. I mean, well, that's yeah. what I'm trying to raise, the kid changers that I ain't going to be around forever. <laughs> you know, like they're the ones hopefully going on, you know? I mean. Trying not to leave this world in so much of a mess for them, us, right? Well, I just say it's like this whole COVID thing. It's like, you know, there's a resilience that I feel like my kids need. And yeah. it's hard for me, honestly, it's challenging for me to step back and be like, yeah, you're sad, man. Like, I'm just going to step out, you know, and let you be sad, you know, not fix it. Yeah. And that kind of thing, you know? Um, and I think that's good. Like I've of the mind that, you know, feelings are there for a reason. And if you're down, you got to be down, right? Yeah. Like, be sad, cry it out. I freaking had a little cry the other day. Like, whatever, like you got tears for a reason, let them fall, they want to fall, right? Like just that's, it's happening. And to embrace that, it's part of the journey. There's ups, there's downs, there's roller coaster. I mean, life is just like, it's a balance the way I see it. Like, you know, you, you could be having just the most amazing fortune luck. And then all of a sudden everything goes sideways and everything's crap for a while, but you know what? It always kind of goes back to good at some point. Like it's just yeah. it ebbs and flows. It's the balance. Um, but just trying to keep that in mind right now. And and we're all in this together, which I find that even me, to me gave me some um, 
I don't know. It gave me some comfort if that's the word or like if every single pl- person on the planet is basically going through something like this. Yeah. Like, like it's not just, I'm not the only one who isn't going out and doing his favorite thing and being outside and working and whatever. Like every, I'm not the one or not sitting in a restaurant, whatever. Right. Like we're all in this together. So it's a great opportunity, I think, for people to really bond and support mm-hmm. each other, you know, and like sure. it, it, it could be a way to bring people closer together and hopefully not the other. Right. But it's strange too. I mean, you kind of look at it where you're like, like somebody goes to freaking my buddy goes to shake my hand the other day. I looked at him like he's a monster. You know what I mean? And I'm like, but I'm like the shake your hand guy. I've always should. And you're like, Wait, you said that you're kind of a germaphobe. Is that right? Anyway, well, did you say I'm, that before? I am. I'm conscious. I told you that when we t- chatted the other day, like I'm just really conscious because I'm rolling around. So I'm right. Roll- that's right. You have a freaking wheelchair. There are germs yeah. on the wheelchair. Yes. Wheelchairs down here. Uh, well, that's <laughs> oh, you're wearing pants. Hey guys. Uh, oh, good thing. <laughs> um, first time. No. First uh, time. <laughs> I'm wearing yeah. jeans. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, I'm glad I remember. Dress up today. Dress up today. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's I'm rolling around. So my hands, mm-hmm. I'm very vulnerable in some sure. that my hands are touching my wheels. You need to wear gloves. Um, whatever, right? So and and I'm if I go grocery shopping, I can't walk and carry the bag. The bag goes on my lap. So there's just I I think there's definitely more um opportunity, not opportunity. Uh Consci- consciousness of, yeah i just of contact and con- contamination i mean you could come home with your groceries in your hand leave them at the outside pick them up one by one bring them in wash them whatever the hell you do leave your shoes out there like you know i can't leave my wheels at the front door so yeah i'm dra- i'm dragging everything in here which is kind of why i don't want to go out yeah um, and haven't really been like i'm kind of at that point of wanting needing to go grocery shopping again and i I actually really enjoy grocery shopping and I buy a lot of produce and I'm, you know, you want to pick up the right stuff. Um, Kevin is a vegan. Yeah. I, I Shout out to vegans. I'm not a vegan, but yeah, vegan. good for you. <laughs> good for I'm you. a vegetarian vegan. I'm mostly a vegan, but I'm sometimes. Okay. okay. Um, so I want to, yeah, say I'm total vegan because there's definitely harder vegans than me, um, but a great lifestyle, definitely plant-based and yeah. just that, that cheese gets me every once in a while. Um, yeah. Cheese. When they get that vegan cheese down and it really, or if I actually had somewhere like sizzle pie, which you have in Oregon where I could order. Wait, sizzle pie. Mm. What's that? It's a pizza place in Portland. Oh, I think they might have one further down too. Um, maybe Eugene or something, but they, um, they have amazing vegan there. pizza. Okay. Good to know. I won't they have regular there, right? pizza too. And they also play awesome heavy metal, which is. So that's the other thing too, is you're a punk rocker. And I think that's another reason why the kids, I, you kind of have this theme about, yeah, you got tats and all this cool, you know, tattoos and a mullet and you can just, yeah, it's all you need kids. Yeah. You rock it. You have the whole yeah. theme, but you actually live it though, too, which is cool. Like, it, which again, that's why kids see the real deal. You know, um, music is definitely a passion of yours and stuff, which is oh, like, it's sure. And there's yeah. been a lot of new music that's just come out in the last week. And I found myself, that's what I've been doing a lot is listening to music. That's awesome. I, music is so healing. And I play a bit of music. I've got guitars and just playing a little bit the other day too. And just, yeah, trying to, trying to keep busy, but I'm, I've enjoyed sort of the downtime of it too. Like the biggest project of the day is making dinner and like yeah. playing some vids. It's kind of nice to unwind at times too. Yeah. Cause normally this time of year, as much as I love being that busy, it is emotionally draining to be, mm-hmm doing 10 presentations a week, an hour per presentation, and then responding to all the students and stuff as much as I love it. By the time June comes around, like I am done. Like, there's, I don't, I, there's not a lot of small talk. It's just kind of focus and do this hour. So I'm kind of right now, it's like, all right, I'm just kind of chilling. But like I said too, it, you can't be doing nothing for however long this is going to last. Cause then I'll be, we got to do things. We got to be productive in some sense. Yeah. Uh, I organized my house this week, which was nice. I had all these boxes of clothes because my place flooded. I'm in a condo, it flooded a few years ago and all the stuff ended up my mom's and it slowly made its way back to me. I have a lot of pairs of vans I might be selling soon. I was going to um, say, you were joking around that walk, you had They're vans. like brand new, all of them. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's no awesome. scuffs. 
<laughs> no scuffs. Uh, um, I yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, we're all finding our new normal and everything like that. And what brought us joy, there's a different kind of joy, you know, and yeah. I'm kind of one of those people that likes to find the joy on my own. I don't like to be told like, go do this, go do that. You need to be spending yeah. time with your kids. You need to be doing this. You know, la, 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 la. I'm more like, yeah. I'm just like, all right, I'm here and I'm going to just take the opportunity to ex look at what exists around me and kind of work with what I got. And that's enough. You know, like I was totally. talking to someone the other day that was like, oh yeah, I made broccoli today. Yeah. And that was it. Like I barely knew her and she was just like, yeah, I made broccoli. I was just like, that's broccoli awesome. Very that's good. awesome. Yeah. I have a great <laughs> like, vegan cheese that... recipe if she wants. <laughs> that was so encouraging. I was just like, wow, all she did yeah. was make broccoli and she's happy. Like, that's cool. Like, I just find that very refreshing. And even if it is a short time, like, I don't know, I'm an extrovert. I like. Oh, me too. Yeah. See, that's, it is a thing. And it's like, I thought after ki having kids, I was like, you know, I'm not really an extrovert, but now it's kind of starting to come back the extrovert in myself and it's, you know, I miss hugs. I miss like, yeah. you know, I, I actually feel like a lack of touch basically. Oh, this is one of the longest conversations I've had in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Right. Like in front of, I don't know how many people, but yeah, yeah. you have. it's going to be tons. The ratings will be off. off. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, and I, I do too. And, uh, yeah, it's weird. And I think, I think one, I mean, I'm always looking for the positive. I think that at least we have summer coming up mm -hmm. and the Absolutely. weather is getting warmer mm -hmm. and it will allow to, you know, minimally hang out outside at least with your social distancing. I mean, I don't even yeah. know if that's the advice I give at this point, if you're even supposed to go outside or sit on in a park with your family members, six feet apart. Um, hopefully things get better. And if there is still some sort of form of sort of, isolation which i think we all should be doing but we do got to get outside and breathe and have fresh air and absolutely vitamin d and get some exercise and have have some social contact i mean i i just think also we're very fortunate the the fact that we live in this age of social media which doesn't always get the best uh, rap but like now there's i mean we're on zoom right now i've gotten zoom that house party app i've you and i've spoke on facebook and uh, WhatsApp all in the last week doing video conferences with friends and family. And at least you can see people's faces. You, you mm -hmm. kind of feel like they're in your home. You're yeah. in their home. Um, you can have that interaction because before it would just be, you know, on the phone, right? Like way back. I mean, there wasn't even call waiting. Like, yeah, yeah. You can kind of get your people together and have those little hangouts at least, which, which is really good. And it's, um, it sounds like people, well, from what I can tell, a lot of my friends are doing that kind of stuff and we're gonna have to be creative right like um yeah and we have the ability to do that do more podcasts have more start that podcast you wanted to do mm -hmm. i'm kind of trying to think of something i'm going to do online maybe start doing some comedy stuff or doing some motivational messages but just to get yourself out there and um it feels good to do that kind of stuff if that's what you're into or maybe you're not into it but you learn that you are um, but it also can benefit a lot of those people who are bored right now and home and our, our Netflix, uh, stuff's going to run out pretty soon. You know what I mean? Like you've watched everything. Yeah. So, and I was even thinking that it's kind of crazy is like, well, they, they can't film movies right now. They can't film I know. TV shows right now. So at some point, depending on how long it lasts and again, you know, thinking, but just the whole picture, like that, I don't know how much, how bad is that backlog of movies and television shows? So we're like, we don't have anything new and we can't film anything new. Um, so we're going to need people. It's going to, it's going to create some new stuff. I think some interesting stuff. So hopefully sure. it's all positive that comes out of it. Um, for sure. So oh, yeah, check out my book. Yeah. I was going to say, that's what I was going to say. Like, what is, how did this come to be? Like, I know just wiggle your toes is the title, but that's something that you say to a lot of people too, because what's that, you that's your thing. Yeah, yeah. Just wait, just let me see that again. Just wiggle your toes. Yeah. Yes. There it is. Okay. Book.com. Just <laughs> W-I-T. Book.com. Um, yeah, the book came about, I mean, I tried writing it years ago and I can write, but I'm not very disciplined and I'm busy and I've got a guitar and I decided I would rather learn guitar and write my book. Basically is what happened and kind of lost direction. 
but a good friend of mine, um, we have buddies for a few years. He's a writer. He lives down in like Hollywood. He's been trying to do that, all different scripts and stuff. He's like, has anyone wrote your book? And I'm like, no, man. And uh, he'd, he'd watch my presentation. We're good buddies. And he was like, let's write it. So we wrote it together. Um, so it's it like a memoir or is it more? It's, you know what? We being rock and rollers, we kind of had an idea of doing it. Like we want it. It's different interviews in a sense. So, okay. um, so like the first chapter is me and I think the second one might be two. And then it's like my mom's take on things and it's my sister Allison's and it's That's two of my cool. best buddies. And the, I think the most, the thing that I love the most about this book and I've been, when I was in schools, I was leaving one at every school and signing it and leaving it in the counseling department and telling the students about it um, is that there's two students who would see me in their school at some point, And these quite a, quite a few years ago, actually, who are now like in their mid twenties. And at that time they were self-harming, they were suicidal, they were depressed. They hadn't really gone to anyone about it. And for whatever it was, they saw my talk, it, it lit something in them. They reached out to me. I encouraged them to get help. I don't want to take credit. I'm not trying to do that. Um, but their stories are so freaking powerful and so real and so raw. And it, it's talking about their journey from basically having this, being in this really dark spot of wanting to kill, the one girl was going to kill herself that afternoon, basically. She oh. to um, and then how they got to where they are now. And, and it's, it's, it's almost like a guide, like for people who are young, dealing with mental health stuff, depression, whatever, how to like get through it. Um, so yeah, I'm re really happy about it. I haven't really been plugging it or anything like that um, until today. <laughs> well, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, but we're ex I was excited to have it out. I mean, it can reach a lot more people. It's a pretty quick read. Um, it's it's geared, it's, it's written like colloquial language, which is what my friend calls, and I know what that is, but I can't say it, but um, I can't even pronounce it, but whatever. Maybe that's colloquial. Blah, 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 blah. Um, colloquial. Yeah. It's but, readable. Yeah, and it's, it's just written like just the way I talk, basically. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. So it's written for kind of a younger audience, but so far it's okay. been a lot of adults and a lot of my friends okay. who I'm kind of surprised are like, man, I really needed that. So um, for, yeah, parents or young people, anybody, um, check it out if you want. We've got it. At, I think it's it's priced really reasonably and you can, I think you can even read it online, Kindle. Um, is it on so I can order on Amazon. So I can it's it. on Amazon, yeah. Amazon.com and it's on Kindle. And I think like Barnes and Noble has it online recently. All these people started picking it up, which was cool. Um, but it's out there, yeah. It's called Just Wiggle Your Toes. And it's 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 a sad story, yeah, for sure. There's still you'll, you'll shed some tears, but it's it's one of definitely hope. And I think also, I mean, it's just how one decision, one person's decision can affect so many. Which and I was drawing sort of the parallels of that in the fact that we're talking about this COVID thing is that, I mean, hopefully that's a message that we can get out with this. And, and I want to kind of start getting out more to the young people that are like following me on social media and stuff that, you know, just because you're young and you might, I mean, now young people are getting it and passing away too. So we don't really know what this is yet, but it's the more the transmission of it. You could pick it up, not know it and give it to somebody else. And every time you're having contact with people, that person's having contact with somebody and that person's having contact. I mean, it's, it's a scary yeah. thing. It's sort of like, almost like you're like, am I getting paranoid? But there, we have to be really aware that and kind of assume that everybody might have it because they might not have the symptoms yet. And just do this thing where we're staying home as much as it sucks. But the more, the better we are at staying home and like self isolating and doing all that and just following, washing your hands and trying to touch your face which I'm actually bad at, um, and I touch my face a lot, but just try to be as clean and transmit this thing as, as, as little as possible, then hopefully the sooner we'll be out of it. We can well, like more of a preventative perspective. Yeah, go back to, you know, the more we're going out and not obeying these rules, the more people are gonna get it, and, the, mm -hmm. and then it's just gonna last longer and longer and longer, it sounds like. I'm no doctor or anything, but um, you apparently don't have to be a doctor to, give medical advice on podcasts or <laughs> Google. Yeah, or, right, right. I don't listen to media is really hard for me. Um, I go by like stats and, you know, that kind of stuff. And even that is not always the most reliable, but I will say this Oregon's doing pretty darn good. Cool. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And we're, we're doing well in British Columbia too. Luckily, like they're saying we've kind of flattened cool. the curve. It might even be yeah. the curve. That's us too. Uh, but I'm glad I love it. I love Oregon State. I speak there a lot. I've met, I've had some of my best ever presentations. I have really good friends down there. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. 
So I'm happy to hear that, um, that you guys are doing well out there and it's not as bad as some of the other states. Um, that's good to hear. Yeah. And it does suck to hear that some, those other states too. Some of the, I mean, New York and New Jersey. Oh my God, New York. New Orleans. I mean, those are favorite places, favorite stops. And it's it's sad how how bad it is in those places. It's scary. Yeah. So it is kind of have that opportunity where we can look at those places that we're not because it's I think there's it's kind of like you know everywhere can be like that we don't want to and I mean thoughts and everything and love and every all power and support and sympathy sent all the people are passing away but we can we can sadly learn from that stuff to what we can do here to not have it get out of control like that yeah Oregon I think your governor or something sent a bunch of we we had a lot of American news he sent a bunch of face masks I think or something like that to New York too which just sounds pretty cool it sounds like Oregon people to me you're good folks yeah well I got my homemade face mask and yeah. um you know my it's funny because my husband he went out and he made a homemade one that they I think they I think actually the CDC kind of sent out something like how to do your own face mask or whatever. And he went out there with it and he yeah. made it. <laughs> okay. I'm the grocery shopper. Okay. Oh, I, hey, te- good. I technically am, yeah. but he decided he wanted to go this week. And so he went and he came back without his mask. And I was like, why did you do that? You know, he was just like, I just like half the people had it on half the people didn't. And then I tried yeah. to talk and it was weird. And like, it was like, am I the one that's carrying it? Or are they the one that's carrying it? Like, it's just like this weird, like, it's a weird thing because we're not it's a used weird to thing. And then, but you're like, what if you touch it and you yeah. have it on your face and you've touched something and you probably don't want that right near your face. I don't know, right? I know. And I look at pictures. I look at pictures now and I look and I'm like, oh, my face was against their face. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That just doesn't ever seem like it will be allowed again. Like, it's just wanna, weird. It's weird. I got a little distracted there for a second, but I, I want to say this if we can just interrupt for one sec. So it's seven o'clock. Uh, it started downtown Vancouver. I live in like the suburbs. But at 7 p.m. every night, people bang pots and pans like it's New Year's Eve. Really? And they scream and shout, and people are playing freaking music, guitars, trumpets, and it's all for the um, healthcare workers, oh. the frontline people out there. So we do. So there's people. I live out in the burbs, and there's people in my building who bang pots and pans and are screaming, yeah, and someone's honking their horn. Like so right now. It just ended. Yeah, it started. It's oh, it just ended. Oh, it's seven o'clock. Cool they were that? doing that. And I was kind of looking over that way, but it's, it's a neat thing. Cause I mean, um, yeah, that's something we're doing here. It's pretty cool. In Vancouver, it's going like people are like, it'll bring you to tears. Cause like the whole city is just basically going, you know, it's all condos, apartments, whatever. Right. right? So there's so many people in that little area. Everybody's getting outside and just screaming and banging. It's like thunderous. And, uh, there's very brave people out there right now that definitely, you know, yeah. show our, show our gratitude and, in any way that we can because they're risking their lives and health and that of their family every time to trying to help us even the people who are delivering food or working at the grocery store or whatever right like yeah i try to send as many anytime i'm ordering skip the dishes and i wipe all my stuff down and be paranoid about it whatever but um just say thanks you know thanks thanks for feeding me and so many other people in this time like being brave to go to work share the love share the love yeah. share the love the hope the peace the whole sure. shebang yeah. So, um, I just love your message, Kevin. I just think, um, what you're doing is really cool and I love how it, it changes with what's going on and around you and adapting to what you adapt to, you know, and that you could be here with us. And I know there's probably some questions out there, Don, I don't know yeah. if there are any, do we, well, let me any? say thanks for having me right now. Yes. I really appreciate meeting all of you, meeting you before, but doing this and everybody who's watching and everybody who will watch. Um, thanks so much for giving us your time and your ears, your attention. And thanks for giving me this opportunity to um, put some positivity out there. Cause I, yeah. I've been doing that for a little while. So thank you very much. Yeah. Stay safe. That's right. Uh, hi, this is Dawn. Hi, uh, Kevin and Tiffany. Thank you so much for that wonderful conversation. And I've been monitoring uh, the questions that have come in and we, we haven't really gotten any questions, but there have been so many comments, people just saying, Thank you so much, Kevin, for sharing your story. You're an amazing person. Thanks for being here. Our world needs you. Um, From Brenda um, and just everybody. (laughs) And everyone's saying uh, thank you so much. Um, And also, 
Anthony, who maybe you know, says, I will come sing outside your window to cheer you up, Kevin, ah. with some uh, <laughs> laughing emojis. Serenade? You're going to get a serenade? <laughs> that, that could, yeah, that's fine. It could be definitely some of the people, because um, I, I posted on Facebook. Thankfully, I didn't post it on my comedy Facebook because those comments might have been very inappropriate. You very know, screened. But yeah. I think, is it Anthony? I, if it's Anthony DeQuino, I've known that guy all my life. He's a good dude, man. So what's up, Ant? Thanks, buddy. Oh, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's cool. But just so everybody knows, I'm doing well. Like, I'm, I'm okay. Just keep getting through. And, and I thank everybody for the support. Um, yeah, I, 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 love, I love doing it. I'm glad to be alive and I'm happy that I can help people. It, it, it's the best feeling in the world, really. So thank you for your support of me. Yeah, and Kevin, I was actually thinking maybe we could team up again if you're up for it and do something focused to um, youth. Yeah, um, I'd love uh, to. Yeah, so let's talk about that some more. Um, but in the meanwhile, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us for our very first uh, Combat COVID-19 Community Support um, live event. We've got live events all week, so please check out um, the schedule on Facebook. You can also uh, follow us um, on our YouTube channel. Um, our next event is tomorrow at noon. Um, and a big shout out to our virtual uh, production, virtual event production partner, Hand in Hand Productions. Thank you, Matt. And thank you again to Kevin and Tiffany and everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks, everybody. Hey.